thank you for joining me. I'm very excited about today's video. Not that I don't like to do every video, but I have finally tried Anastasia Beverly Hills product. I have heard so many people talk about Anastasia Beverly Hills, all the products, but especially the palettes. And I never really wanted to spend the money because I thought, is it really worth it? How different can eyeshadow be? Well, I finally got my hands on one. This is available at Ulta for $42. I did purchase it and let's get started. Let's swatch the colors as I'm talking. I do have it on today and I will admit that there is difference in the different eyeshadow palettes. So like I said, this is my first time I tried Anastasia. I wasn't really sure, I, my expectations were kind of like, I know people talk about it, but come on, how different could it be? It's eyeshadow. Well, it does feel different, and it is hard to kind of describe the difference, except, like, I guess I could say that the shadows to the eye, or to the touch kind of feel more velvety, softer, so I'd really recommend if you're on the fence about spending the money for one of these, you know, go to the store, if Ulta, if you have an Ulta neck around you, you know, go and kind of swatch it out, see what you think, and you will be able to kind of, just by one um, swatch, you'll be able to tell the difference, I feel like, in the texture of the shadow. So this does come with a two-sided brush. Here's the colors, just kind of a quick look. The packaging has a soft velvet, and I always store all of my makeup products back in the box, if you didn't store this one in the box and just kind of, you know, put it back in your makeup drawer with other brushes and stuff, I would assume that this would get pretty dirty just because of the velvet consistency. Um, on the back, it has, has the information and it does say that the shelf life is 18 months, which I'm trying to remember to when I get products and open them to write the date of that on the product. But as you can see, I didn't on this one. I keep forgetting to do that. Now, the eyeshadows on this say that they are made in the US. I have reached out to the company to see if I can confirm because when I did my research online, I couldn't find a confirmation if all of their products were made in the US or if they weren't. So at the time I'm filming this, I am still waiting to hear back from them. If I hear back from them by the time I publish this video, I will leave an update down below on what they told me. So, okay, here you go. Again, here, this is the Norvina palette. It's the purple, obviously. And so let's get started. I will say that the double-sided brush, I have used it a couple times. You know, I know that normally I always, people say, yeah, the brushes that come with palettes aren't really that good, and it's okay, you know, it's, um, you got the one side here and the other side is a fluffier rounder brush you know I don't know if it I don't have any of her other brushes to compare but it's an okay brush and if you look at the palette I have used it quite a few times you could see that the bottom row is all matte shades and the top is shimmer so I do like how they have that laid out you can probably tell that the glim shimmer shades are kind of softer. They do have quite a bit of fallout and this rose gold color um, did crumble a little bit in the palette, but I could just kind of pack it back together. It didn't break or anything. It was just, it is very soft. So I'm just going to start and I will, I'm gonna, um, okay. So the, oh, and the names, is on the back of the box as well so I can look at that so we have the first mat with the base yeah and they're just very creamy soft eyeshadows but they do apply this one is hard to see but it is a, again a base so it's very even when you apply it it's soft I do really like this mat so then I'll just go through the mattes, I think. Yeah. The next one is Soul, which is a kind of a grayish purple color. 
And as you can see, that's going in once and there's, you know, no spottiness. It's pretty even of a swatch. And when you apply it, it's the same way. That one, it doesn't feel quite as soft to the touch, but Incense is the next one, this brown one, and this one feels extremely soft. And as you can, here's that one. And, you know, they apply pretty much the same way on the eyes. I will say that in general for this palette, the glitter shadows, I definitely saw fallout. So there wasn't as much fallout with the matte ones, oh but sorry about that. It came up that my phone was full and I had to delete things, so hopefully I deleted enough. I'm very excited. I just ordered the XR phone, so hopefully that will help and I won't have to be deleting things. Anyway, okay, this is Love. Then we have the next three that I'm going to swatch is Volatile, Eccentric, and Passion. So it's these bottom three ones. And these two are what I'm wearing today on my eyes. Okay, so again, just really, really soft to the touch. And they go on pretty good. But I don't know if you can see. So, you know, when you first swatch them, see how this one, there is some powder there. When you blend it in, it does go away. But with it being pow soft and powdery like that, I think that that's where the fallout comes from. But as you can see, they're all pretty even consistent when you swatch them. So I did feel like when I put them on that they went on really easy. They're very pigmented, but it's not so, I'm just gonna remove this one, or these swatches. They're not so pigmented that if you can't blend it out. You know, if you put on like the Passion and it's too dark, the kind of the brick red, um, you know you can blend it away to where it won't be quite as dark but they do kind of have enough or they do have enough pigment to where you're not just easily blending you know on a couple other eyeshadows that I've tried you know when I put kind of a base on and then a cup or uh, color on the upper crease and then on the corner and then one here and I just try to blend it so it's not as harsh then half the time it seems like the dark color has been totally blend it away so then I have to apply it more where with this palette I did feel like once you apply it and then just take a clean brush and kind of just buff it out that it does blend so there's no harsh edges without blending the color away if that makes sense so I was happy with that and the staying power is good I had when I've ever I've worn these you know I do have eyeshadow on at the end of the night so I do really appreciate that and like that okay so now I'm going to swatch the top row and the glitters so the first two is dreamer and summer so those two so since they're and they are just when you touch them to swatch them they are just so the glitters are just so buttery, creamy, velvety. I mean, they just feel so nice. And when I used to hear, hear YouTubers talk about how just rich things felt and so nice, I thought, oh, how can it be that different? But I'm telling you, they're just so, so velvety, rich, creamy. So those two, the next one, Wild Child and Rose Gold. These two, I would say that you have to be the most careful as far as having the fallout and they are definitely creamy I would say they're not as velvety and creamy as the first two they're kind of more of a softer so I think that's why the fallout because even when I apply it you can well yeah you can I don't know if you can kind of see it's kind of chunky but this one I really even though you have to be careful with it I really do like this one it just gives like such a nice glitter to it but I, I don't know if you can see as I swatched it. See, it's just kind of breaking up up there. So yeah, you just have to be a little bit careful. The next ones is Celestial, then Dazzling, and the last one is Drama. And Drama is what I have on today out here. Just so soft. Now is it, oh, the Dazzling is very velvety. 
There's Celestial and Dazzling. Is it worth $42? Here's Drama. See, the Drama isn't quite as glittery as the other ones. I think that if you're looking for a you know, high-end palette to try, I would say that I like this one and recommend this one. I also recently purchased a Too Faced palette, which was the first time, um, well, no, actually that's not, I take that back, sorry. I think I've had a Too Faced palette before, I'll have to double check. But um, I'm working on using that one now and I am going to be kind of comparison, comparing these. I want to do that in 2019. Ugh. Um, you know, where I have videos where I can compare the products that I have because I don't know about you, but when I, with all these products and when I watch people and look at reviews, I kind of, you know, want to see what is the difference between when they're kind of in the same price point. So I'm working on that. Overall, I really liked it. I felt like the colors were very creamy. There is a lot of staying power. They apply it easily and blend easily. My only thing would be, you know, some of those glitter ones, like I said, are very kind of soft and you have to be careful not to get it all over the place. I liked applying the glitters, the shimmery colors better with my fingers and kind of patting it on rather than applying with the brush. For me, I felt like that was the best technique to use. I would say to do, I don't know what you usually do as far as your routine, but if you're using this, do your eyes first before you do foundation, concealer, anything else. Because, you know, there is so much fallout, I found, depending on the color. Some are definitely have more fallout than others. But there's so much fallout that I think if you didn't either put a shield there or a tissue there. Um, the last time I did put a bunch of powder there and just kind of swept it away and that kind of helped. But you'll want to do your concealer and foundation after this so that you can clean up under the eyes. So that's kind of my overall. Would I purchase another palette from Anastasia? Probably not because I want to get through this one and I think at that price point for me personally, I probably wouldn't or purchase an additional one. But am I glad that I purchased this one? Yes, for sure. And I have worn it a lot. I will be reaching for this definitely. So I am glad it is in my collection and I would recommend if you're thinking about it on the fence, you know, maybe wait until I think once in a while Ulta does have coupons that you can use on prestige brands. Most of the time the coupons aren't, but you know, or put it on your wish list or if you just want to splurge, you know, I definitely am glad that I got it, happy that I have it and will definitely be using it. So I do not feel like I wasted my money on it for what that's worth. And I don't know if I said, but they are 100% cruelty free. So I do like that. So let's just kind of talk about a little bit about the company and the history of it. It was founded by a Romanian born Anastasia Sor, Sor, I'm not sure how you say her name, last name, but she launched her brand in Beverly Hills flagship salon in 1997. First went in the salons, what she was doing and what she kind of started and was known for is her um, eyebrow shaping method. So that's why she launched in a salon and then launched product line later, was kind of why that difference. Um, she was the first to introduce brow shaping and products based on her patented golden ratio eyeshadow shaping method. And what that talks about is, you know, kind of the how uh, the point of your eyebrow should line up to your nose and your eye and then the uh, point of it and than the edge of it. I don't really do too much with my eyebrows. Maybe I should, but so maybe I'll try and research that more and you know, you do that in a future video. I'm not sure. But anyway, so let back to this. In 2014, they launched new color makeup line on Instagram. So her first products were based all on eyebrows. And now the products are she has quite a few different palettes. The products are available in Dillard's, Macy's, Nordstrom, Sephora, Ulta, and select other retailers in over 25 countries. So there's definitely plenty of places to get it. So I hope that this video helps. I didn't ramble on too much. 
and I would love to know have you tried any Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes which one is your favorite I really think that when I went to Ulta and I was trying to figure out which palette to get you know I kind of was swatching them and you can't totally always tell by swatches but they did seem pretty similar I think that it really is more what color choices speak to you recommend it I'm like I said I'm happy I purchased it and I'm excited to keep on using it and make more looks with it so I hope that you follow me over on Instagram because my goal this year is to also get better about going over there and posting looks that I am able to create with these different palettes I am not a makeup artist but I do want to kind of try to create different looks so if you enjoy this video give me a thumbs up and I'd love to know down below have, do you have any Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes thanks for watching see you next time bye